Ladies and gentlemen, my next guest tonight is a rock and roll Hall of Fame inductee who co founded the legendary hip hop group Public Enemy. He has a new docuseries on PBS called Fight the Power How Hip Hop Changed the World. The message was really the culmination of the last 25 years that was thrust upon black folks. The bill collectors that ring my phone and scare my wife when I'm not home. Got a bump education, double digit inflation, can't take the train to the job. There's a strike at the station. My group wasn't the happy five, it was the furious five. So I've always been a high strung, angry type individual. Don't push me, cause I'm close to the edge. I'm trying not to lose my head. <laughs> when the message came out that gave hip hop a voice and it actually grew up. It's like that that was when it went from the infantile stage to a young adult stage. Please welcome back to the late show Chuck D. I bought these. I, love those. I, I like bought them. these in my 19th anniversary of being in this cold studio <laughs> on, the, on the Letterman show. How long? What, what year was that? 94. That was 29th anniversary. What's up, Ben? Friend. What's going on, man? Good to see yeah. you. Frozen at 29. 29 years right, ago, right. you were here. So, yeah, so um, here I am with you, and it's a pleasure in seeing the hip hop god, Melly Mel, from this city representing hip hop. I'm so proud. Fight the power, how hip hop has changed the world. Uh, okay, co founder of uh, Public Enemy, uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, uh, music has influenced uh, thousands of other artists. Who influenced you? Who were the people when you were coming up that you wanted to be? Well, I come from the 60s, so James Brown, Simon Family Stone, the Beatles, who played in this building, too. Wow. You know, sure. Nina Simone. All Aretha, those people performed They were like right aunts here. and uncles in the household. And then yeah. when rap music and hip hop came along, you know, in the, in the 79 as a recorded form, but six years before, this is the 50th year, y'all. So you had Melly Mel, Grandmaster Flash, and the Furious Five, Curtis yeah. Blow. You know, KRS One, it's, it's the first hip hop union, the Hip Hop Alliance that we're part of. So a lot of the founding members, the golden um, generation in the 90s, and also, so. I was influenced by the cats that did it. And also, because it rose out of the concrete like a rose, you know, hip hop came from this city when it was actually thrown to the side. You know, they left New York for dead. Literally, it was in right. New York Daily News. Exactly, uh, drop dead. Yeah, so out of that, after everything was disenfranchised, hip hop rose. And that's what we're depicting in the documentary, uh, Fight the Power, How Hip Hop Changed the World. It made, you know, scholarship out of watching Melly Mel and Roxanne Chante and Eminem and Grandmaster Cass speak truth to power in such a beautiful music. You know, you know, the conversation, Stephen, was like, at what point do we look at a genre that's been around 50 years? At what point do we consider important, great, or if not greater than popularity? Because it's art, and, and art is one of those things that can't be quantified. It has a quality to it, and hip hop's no different. Okay, so it can't be quantified. It can't be quantified. But what are some of the characteristics? What are some of the characteristics you'd say help uh, define the boundaries of hip hop? Well, the elements kind of clearly do that with MCing, DJing, um, graffiti, and breakdancing. But really, those are elements of creativity of a people. Where MCing is vocalization, mm -hmm. DJing is musicianship. You know, art culture is graffiti and pretty much, and then you got dance culture out of break dances. So we've always been creative. The terminology came into effect out of people making something out of nothing in the 1973 period, August 11th, like uh, the Blastmaster KRS One says, the chairman, he would say, like, listen, it started in the Bronx, 1520 Sedgwick Avenue. And this documentary really gets into seeing these faces and these people and contributors speak for the speak for the art form for themselves and seizing the narrative. 
Well, the, the documentary is Fight the Power, How Hip-Hop Changed the World. The it's world on... is important, too. Well, that's, that's, the, that's what yes, I want to ask you about exactly. this, because these are all things that came up. This is you and your friends in your neighborhood making your own art, reflecting the world you see around you. But very, very early on, you're on tour. You're, you're overseas. What, how did it change you, and what did it mean for you to be taking this work internationally? Well, I consider myself an Earthison. I've been to 116 countries, so they're always an looking. An Earthison. Earthison. Not a citizen of one place, a citizen of the planet Earth. You know? Okay, gotcha. And, um, I mean, as you know, in your commentary, we're all wrapped in this thing together, whether somebody likes it or not. What somebody does over there is gonna affect over here. Whatever somebody does here is gonna affect over there. Sure. But the music has license to travel around the world and actually connect us as human beings. I've seen people flip languages. I've seen people flip languages in the movement of collectives of people against injustices from whatever was going on in the past that made fight the power and before then into Black Lives Matter and being, hey, this is wrong. The culture connected people, the music and the vibe. And uh, I think we could stare it the right way. See, I'm not in awe of hip hop like somebody born in hip hop would be. Uh, you know, I'm 12 years older than hip hop. So 50 years to me is like, hey. You know, well, and, I, and, I'm, and I'm saying that, you know, 50 years is short in real time, but long in cultural time. I didn't know this, that you were a visual artist. You're publishing a book of your work yeah. from, from recently and from the, the beginnings of uh, your hip hop career when you would do flyer art for other people who were yes, doing sir. shows. Tell me about this book, Living Loud. <laughs> well, number one, you know, Ronnie Wood of the yep. Rolling Stones is yep. my hero. Oh, yeah. And I've spent more time, half my life, in hotel rooms. So one of the biggest things on tour, the problem is what to do with your downtime. Everybody wants to go to the concert and whoop whoop is an hour, two hours, whatever. Then you got downtime. And I'm not going to name a city <laughs> that your downtime might be a different downtime. But I turned my, <laughs> I turned, especially the last uh, 10 years, I turned my hotel room into an art studio and spent my downtime creating art. So, um... The great Jack Holtzman of Electra Records told me, he said, you know, everybody got art in them. It's the job of curators and caretakers to get the art out of them, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's why I always say, I never walk by musicians without acknowledging a salute, you know? So, that, you know, it's an incredible thing to get art out of you. And um, you're an artist, and I consider myself a person that, you know, social media has also helped, although I'm creating something called cultural media, which I think is greater than social media, so I'm working an application on that. But I would tell you that now you can do art online and somebody can see it right away and saying, oh, by the way, I got a gallery show. You're gonna come? Yeah, I'll be there, maybe. But now on social media, you can go boop, you know, I'll send it and wow, how can I get that art? So finally we came out with a book and um, it's a bunch of doodles that, uh, that kind of represent my, you know, 62 years on earth. Well, Chuck, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Fight the power. Yeah. How hip hop changed the world starts January 31st on PBS. And Living Loud is available starting February 7th. Chuck D, everybody.